Good day, and welcome to the Crystals and Beyond podcast. Let's drop in on the current discussions of Aaron and Irene and see where they have been poking around in the worlds of crystals, herbs, astrology, divination, and beyond. We join them in progress. Okay, so um, this whole idea of maintaining a healthy aura, right? And then you bring in magic, like crystal conjure magic does. It gets interesting. Like they've got all these spells and bundles for cleansing and healing and all that. But it's that phrase, energetic gunk, that really caught my eye. What do you think they're getting at with that? That's where it gets kind of fascinating. Right. Because what does that even mean? Are we talking like, uh, you know, specific emotions that are hanging around? Yeah. Bad vibes from like past experiences? <laughs> or is it more about outside stuff kind of seeping in? It's almost like they're saying it's this tangible thing, this gunk that you can like scrub off. Yeah. Which I guess is where the whole cleansing spells thing comes in. Like yeah. they're promising that feeling of lightness, you know. Yeah. You've cleared out the cobwebs, but not just in your house, in your energy field too. Right, right. Like a spiritual spring cleaning. Exactly. I'm yeah. picturing like a feather duster, but for your soul, ha ha. I love that. And it plays on that universal thing, right? Yeah. That everyone wants a fresh start, that feeling of renewal. But instead of telling you to just like, go for a walk or clean out your closet. They've got these spells like, get this celestial shower is one of them. And they describe it as purifying your energetic body with moonlight. It's kind of poetic when you think about it. And it reminds me there are all these cultures that have used rituals with water or fire to purify things for centuries, right? It's like crystal conjure magic is drawing on that old wisdom, but putting it in this package that feels very, you know, now modern. modern. Totally. And that's really key here, the accessibility of it. They've taken something that could be seen as, I don't know, kind of out there or even a little intimidating, and they made it seem simple. You don't have to be some kind of magic expert. You just got to, like, buy in, believe in the power of the spell. Yeah. And it's not just a quick fix either. They've got a whole section for healing spells. One that stood out to me was um, Heart Mend. It talks about fixing damage to your aura, but then it also mentions emotional healing, self-love, all that. Do you see any connection there, like to more traditional ways of healing? That's what's so interesting because yeah. it's like they're tapping into this idea of the mind-body connection, which is huge in so many healing traditions. The idea that if you're feeling good emotionally, your physical health is better and the other way around too. Mm -hmm. So they're framing it within magic and auras and all that, but they're also hitting on something that's very much based in how we understand well, being human. It makes you wonder, right, like how much of this is the placebo effect in action? If you believe a spell, like Hartman can actually help you heal emotionally, could it like kickstart something inside you? Ah, the million dollar question. And you know, there's actually a lot of research now about how powerful the placebo effect really is. It's not just about like tricking people into feeling better. It's about how our beliefs and expectations mm -hmm. can create real changes in our brains, our bodies, the whole deal. It's wild, right? How our minds can kind of shape our reality like that. And speaking of shaping reality, Crystal Conjure Magic doesn't just stop at cleansing and healing. Oh no, they've got these strengthening spells too, yeah. to like supercharge your aura. They even have one called, get this, Cosmic Dynamo. Okay, yeah, now that's a name that just screams power. Right, Like yeah. it taps into that very primal thing in us that wants to be strong, resilient, you know, able to handle anything. And that desire for inner strength, it's everywhere you look in every culture throughout history. So true. We all want to feel like we can handle whatever life throws at us. And the way they describe these strengthening spells, it's something else. They use phrases like amplifying your personal power and becoming like a magnet for positive energy. They even talk about tapping into the limitless energy of the universe. Bold claims for sure. Yeah. But also pretty smart marketing if you think about it. Because it's not just spells they're selling, it's this fantasy. A fantasy of being untouchable, having this like radiant aura that just deflects negativity and attracts all the good stuff. And, you know, for someone who's feeling drained, overwhelmed, that fantasy can be super appealing. Totally. It's like they're offering a sense of control, right, in a world that can feel very much out of control. Which, speaking of control, leads us to their last category, protecting spells. There's one, it's called shielded. And they say it creates this like invisible fortress around your aura. I don't know about you, but having my own little energy fortress sounds pretty great. I get it. And again, it goes back to that fundamental need for safety, for security. It's like we've been building walls and finding shelter for, well, forever. But in this case, the wall isn't physical, it's energy. 
It's this idea that you can create a barrier between you and all the bad vibes out there. Exactly. And whether or not you buy into the whole like negative energies thing, literally, the question is, could doing a ritual that's supposed to protect you from them actually make you feel better, you know, safer, more confident, more able to set boundaries? That's what's so fascinating about all of this. Even if we're like, you know, a little skeptical, there's still this possibility that these spells, these rituals, they're tapping into something real inside us, something that maybe science hasn't fully figured out yet. It's like they're giving us a new way to talk about stuff we've always kind of sensed, you know? Oh. Things like energy, intention, the power of believing in something. Oh, and speaking of, I noticed Crystal Conjure Magic sells all the spells on their own, but then they also have this, wait for it, healthy aura spell bundle. You get them all at a discount. Classic bundle strategy. It's been around forever, and it works. You create a sense of, oh, this won't last forever, and people feel like they're getting a steal. Plus, let's be real, we love a quick fix. And this bundle, it's like the one-stop shop for all your aura needs. For sure. We're all about instant gratification these days. But marketing aside, I'm actually kind of curious about the blog itself. They've got articles on everything from crystals to working with the moon cycles. It's like they're really going all in on being a resource, not just a shop. Which is really smart. Yeah. You know, because if people see you as an expert, someone they can learn from, they're way more likely to buy from you. Right. And when you look at the titles of their posts, stuff like harnessing your inner magician, everyday enchantments, even manifesting with moon magic. Yeah. It's clear they're playing into this desire we have for a little magic in our lives. Yeah. It's like we all want a little more enchantment, you know, and some of their spell descriptions, I've got to say, they're pretty spot on. I mean, weave moonlight into a shield of protection. Come on. They know how to use words. That's for sure. There's an art to it, making you feel real, even if you don't buy into the, you know, actual magic part. Words are powerful, yeah. right? They can change how we see things, how we feel, even cause physical sensations. It's pretty amazing. It's like they're crafting an experience, you know, a feeling. And that takes me back to something you were saying before about the placebo effect, the power of what we believe. So do you think maybe using these spells, even if it's all just symbolic, could that actually tap into that power? Like, could it be a way to activate some inner healer in us, that ability we all have to change and grow? That is the question, isn't it? And is what makes this whole topic so intriguing. Because on the one hand, we have this very human need to believe in something bigger than ourselves, something magical, something, I don't know, kind of mysterious. And then at the same time, we're learning more and more about how powerful our minds are, mm -hmm. how our thoughts can actually shape our reality. It's like, where's the line between believing and, you know, the science of it all? between magic and just the placebo effect doing its thing. Right. Maybe the line isn't so clear. Maybe it's more fluid than we think. Yeah. Like, it's not about picking one or the other, but realizing they both have a place in our lives. I mean, we're complicated beings, right? <laughs> we can think logically and also take these huge leaps of faith. And maybe, just maybe, that's where the real magic is, where science and spirituality, logic and intuition, where they all come together inside us. I like that. So as we wrap up our little deep dive into crystal conjure magic and their uh, unique take on auras and all that, it really makes you think, doesn't it? What if the real magic isn't in the spells themselves? What if it's about the intention, the belief, the willingness to tap into what we've already got inside us? That power to heal, to grow, to become something new, something to ponder. <laughs> and maybe, just maybe, a little sprinkle of magic to take with you today.